Uh, so I'm going to begin uh, just by asking me how much of an inspiration is, is Colette to, to women today, or, or anyone for that matter? I mean, someone who kind of rejected societal norms and overcame sort of um, societal restraint and expressed sexuality through art in a way that was completely unheard of at that, that time. I mean, it, I mean, it's been, what, sort of a century, but it, how just how much of an inspiration can she still be to, to people I today? I think any woman who is... Uh, carving her own path and being entirely true to herself is somebody that can be inspiring. That's not to say she's not flawed. I think the whole point now is that we start telling stories of women who are all things, you know. I, uh, the time for telling stories about women as one-dimensional kind of virgin or whore type characters, with that, that's gone, that's over. And now we get to see women in all their glory and she is a glorious, was a glorious human being. So what was the initial attraction to getting involved in this project? Well, I want to be part of any story that is um, about a woman like that. And so, um, but I really wanted to work with Wash. I, I really loved him when I met him and um, uh, I loved the passion that he had for this project. And it's surrounded by a lot of love. He wrote it with his late partner and I, um, and I wanted to be part of, uh, we didn't know then what was going to happen with the Me Too movement, but I just knew that this was an important story that doesn't get told very often, you know. I knew nothing about Colette. Growing up in Ireland, this was not a woman that I was taught could be my inspiration, you know, so. So how much uh, information was available on the, on, on the real Missy? I mean, how much, was there much? Not very much, yeah. which is bizarre to me. Um, it was Wash and the team of people around Wash that educated me about Missy um, because it's difficult to find a lot of stuff about her which is ridiculous considering what she was doing and what she did at that time and uh, how she identified and the movement that she has really gone on to. It, you know, she's kind of at the forefront of the LGBTQ movement, you know, and uh, the fact that she's not talked about more is bizarre to me, but hopefully this film is going to, you know, hopefully another film will be made about her. Him. Yeah, because I was wondering, because do you think in some ways not having a huge amount of, of information available can be quite beneficial because it allows you to find your own route to the character? Because I sometimes find that there can be, some actors have sort of said that there's almost too much sometimes available and it can be yeah, almost overwhelming in some ways. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I feel like the most important thing for me really was, was understanding how to, uh, to talk about Missy um, uh, with the right pronouns, and because we have so much information available to us now about sexual identity that wasn't available back then, and so reading about how uh, Missy identified and how people described her, sometimes she was referred to as him, sometimes as her, like she really played with the notion of not conforming to a specific label because there were no labels available back then. And so um, most of my research after, after researching how she lived and uh, the facts about her life were about the gender specifics, you know, how to talk about her in a respectful way without trying to assign contemporary sexual identities onto a historical character because it's much more complicated um, than it would be to talk about a contemporary character. And you mentioned uh, earlier that you were, you've been in Greece. I'm assuming that's with for Monday with Sebastian. Yes. Um, what can you tell us about that at this early stage? I, mean, I was about to ask you if you got it started. Is I'm assuming. Wild. <laughs> it is a wild experience, and it's bizarre to have come <laughs> to Toronto in the middle of it. We were on like a little island together two days ago, so. Um, yeah, it's an incredibly creative experience. I needed something to refill the well after doing two years of Angels in America, so um, it's doing that. I'm having a great time with him and with our beautiful director and team. Are you focusing more now, would you say, on cinema, or sort of consciously? Because mm. I mean, obviously you're a real force on stage and so much of your, your great work I has been on stage. I am that. I am a real force on stage. Um, <laughs> uh, I will never, ever, ever stray very far from the theatre, but I need a little break. I have done 16 years of three plays a year and the last two years have been very intense. Um, and so my body needs to reacclimatize to itself. And, uh, and, then, and then in 2020, I'm hoping to get back uh, big. I just, I just find it, I was just wondering, because you're down, because I was looking at what you've got coming up on, on IMDb, which is obviously the, the only place where I do all my research. <laughs> and you're, it's, it says you're in Joe Conscious, the man who would be king, but it would be king, sorry, and it, but it says you're the only one in brackets, it says rumoured. So I was wondering if you're, if you're allowed Am to I say, in yeah. In it? Yeah, yeah, I'm in, in it. I'm in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've, 
<laughs> yeah, I think that comes out in March. It's a beautiful oh, nice. kids movie. I wanted to make something that my nephews and niece could watch because everything else is like deranged <laughs> with tragedy. So it's it's good to do something for them. Brilliant. Well, they can take that room a bit off IMDb. Now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And all the other stuff on IMDb yeah. that's simply not true. Yeah. But thanks so much for your time. You're much. welcome. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.